Hello, welcome to NPTEL NOC, an introductory course on point set topology, part two, module three. So today we shall begin with some preliminaries required from one variable real analysis. I can say that it is one variable calculus, but in calculus courses, we don't go this deeper. So I take this opportunity to do this one. I will explain why this is needed a little later. Start with any function defined on an open interval J to R. For any point X inside J, we will define the upper Dini right and derivatives. They are attributed to Dini. He was one of the French mathematicians, I believe. Uh, so let us just call them upper right hand derivatives. Okay. They are not right hand derivatives. You are already familiar with right hand derivatives and left hand derivatives. Now we are only taking upper right hand derivatives, which are nothing but so notation is t plus of f at x lim sup of these divided uh, differences f of x plus delta minus fx divided by delta. The only thing which makes it uh, right derivative is delta tends to 0 plus. So only from positive part all delta is always taken positive here. Okay, delta tends to 0 but positive. And you are not taking the limit which may not exist, but you are taking the lim sup. The whole idea is that lim sup always exists, no matter what the function is. If you allow infinity also, for example, this always exists. If it is a bounded function, then it will be a finite thing, it will always ex exist. Okay. So I am just recalling the definition of limb sup here, which is nothing but infimum of all these quantities over n, okay, for all n here, where the inside thing is supremum over all the deltas of f of x plus delta minus f x divided by delta, delta between 0 and 1 by n. Okay, so if you make say 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4 and so on, as the interval for delta becomes smaller and smaller, supremum also becomes smaller. So this, this sequence as a sequence in N is a monotonically decreasing sequence. Therefore, its infimum exists. Okay. Is actually limit of this one. It's monotonically decreasing sequence. Okay, so this always exists. I don't need to call this one, but I am rewriting it just to to tell you what is limb soup. That's all. So d plus f x always exists. This is called upper d right hand derivative. Similarly, I can define the lower Dini right hand derivative. The only thing I change is instead of limb soup, I take limb inf, which is in the in the first you take infimum over in this interval over delta, then you get a strictly, uh, you get a monotonically increasing sequence, you take supremum of that. It can be shown that, I mean, this is very clear from this one, limb sup is, limb inf is always smaller than limb sup and so on. If both of them exist and, so sorry, both of them always exist, but if they are equal, then it will be actually the limit, namely the right hand derivative. Okay, so these things you must be knowing, but now we have these symbols here, d plus and d minus for upper right hand derivative and lower right hand derivative okay so it is easily checked that if 
एफ इज डिफरेंशियबल एट एक्स देन डी प्लस इज इक्वल टू डी माइनस इक्वल टू द डेरिवेटिव for any two functions f and g and any constant alpha we have d plus of f plus g is d plus of f plus d plus of g d plus of alpha f is alpha times d plus of f so these are just linearity of d plus which follows by the corresponding property for lim sup okay the same thing for lim in also and in d minus also by the way i have only talked about the right hand derivative it's exactly same way you can fare two more uh, d is here from the left hand also so there will be four such quantities if f exists uh, sorry if f is differentiable then all these four quantities are equal to the derivative itself indeed it's if and only if okay so that is the easiest way to see that but i am not interested in right now the left hand derivatives here at all okay so neither i am going to do a lot of things with these things these things are very very helpful in general uh, uh, you know analysis uh, so i take this opportunity to just to introduce them my main aim is to use them to prove the so called weak mean value theorem in the case of banach spaces okay so let us go ahead with that so this is theorem which will help us to do that job this is very simple thing okay depends only on d plus which always exists so all that i start is start with a function f defined on say some open interval and a continuous function real world function assume f0 equal to 0 this is a harmless assumption you can always assume f0 equal to something and then subtract that but that is not a problem so this is technically this is just a technical assumption the basic assumption here is that this is a continuous function okay suppose for some alpha positive d plus of f is less than or equal to alpha for all x inside 0 1 suppose you have found out a bound upper bound for d plus of f okay so pay attention i am taking it only 0 to 1 okay all that i want is this could be 0 to 1 but i want to have a function even defined at at 1 uh, also okay so the conclusion is that fx is less than equal to alpha x for the entire of 0 1 okay so i don't want to write 1 plus epsilon and something so i have taken just 1 comma 0 comma 2 there is nothing lost here no extra assumption or nothing i mean this as general as it could be okay so just a continuous function if the dd derivative t plus is bounded it will give you bound a very specific bound in terms of bound for all the function fx itself okay so this bound must be inside the open interval 0 1 I mean, zero open and one open, zero closed and one open. But the conclusion is for the entire zero to one closed interval. Okay. So, so what? How do we have go ahead? It? If I show that alpha x f of x is less than equal to alpha plus epsilon x, alpha plus epsilon times x for every epsilon positive. then because it's true for every epsilon positive it must be true for alpha itself right so i consider the function fx minus alpha plus epsilon x okay right and show that this function is less than or equal to 0 g0 
gx is this function, gx is less than or equal to zero. g zero here is put to x equal to if x equal to zero here, this f zero is zero, this zero, so this zero. So this is negative, non-positive for all x. The same thing as saying that f x is less than or equal to alpha plus epsilon times x. For every epsilon, this is true. F x is equal to alpha is complete. Okay. So how do I prove that g x is less than equal to zero for all x in zero one? Okay. Now what the only hypothesis that I have is that g is continuous because f is continuous. Okay. This is just a difference of two continuous functions here. So g is continuous. Continuous function on a closed interval attains its minimum on each closed interval, zero to x I have taken. Okay, for all x inside zero one. Okay, look at fix some x inside zero one. After all, I have to prove for all this one here, right? I don't want to take one yet, but you can take for all x. This is true after all. G is continuous, therefore attains its minimum on the whole of zero x. Okay, for all x. So we claim this minimum value is at x itself. If the minimum is at x, okay, for all other things, g x must be less than or equal to that minimum, uh, bigger than or equal to that minimum. So g x will be less than that. In particular, g x will be less than g zero because zero is all, g zero is also one of the values, right? So we want to prove g x is less than g zero. We are proving a very strong thing that the function itself takes minimum value at x. Okay, so there is a lot more we are proving here, but we are not using. Finally, we are just using that g x is non-negative. Okay, so how do we prove that? Claim is that the minimum value at x, uh, minimum value of this g is at x. Okay, so that is where the Dini derivative d plus will help us. And by the way, every time you are to do with limb soup, you have to do this epsilon business. Give an epsilon subtract or add whatever then the something happens that is the only way to catch this limb soup and limb means not only even in limits also there is it is the way so for limb soup also is what you have to do so d plus of g remember g was difference of two functions right d plus of f plus d plus of this function minus of alpha plus epsilon times x Okay, but what is the derivative of this one? It is this is linear map, so it is alpha plus epsilon. Whenever derivative exists, d plus will exist. D plus will uh, will be equal to that. So it is just the derivative, which is alpha plus epsilon. This is d plus as 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 it is. Okay, so this d plus g is nothing but d plus f minus alpha plus epsilon. Which is we started with our assumption that this is negative. Okay, in D plus C is less than equal to alpha itself. What we have assumed. Okay, so apply this one to a point y inside zero to x. This is true for all points inside this open interval zero one. Okay, take a take fix an x and then take y inside zero to x. We see that. There exists an n belonging to n such that now I am going to use what is limb soup correctly, okay? Such that supremum over this interval is less than zero. If something d plus is less than zero, if all the supremums, okay, were greater than or equal to zero, then the limits limb soup will be also greater than or equal to zero. So for some n, this must be less than zero. 
बिकॉज डी प्लस इज इनफिम ओवर ऑल सच थिंग ओके सो फॉर सम एन दिस मस्ट बी लेस देन जीरो ओके so which is the same thing as saying if you clear delta remember now delta is positive because it is between 0 and 1 by n g of y plus delta minus g of y is negative for every delta in 0 to 1 by n okay that is where this this uh, uh, delta is ranging over this one this must be negative for all the y because the supremum itself is negative therefore each term must be negative therefore see if gy is minimum then gy gy plus delta cannot be smaller than gy therefore gy is not the minimum of g in the entire of 0 to x because y is taken in between 0 to x 0 to close rex it is minimum in the in the open interval it cannot be the minimum therefore where is the man where is the minimum it must be at x you understand the minimum is not may not be attained in zero open interval open part x but it is it is the minimum we are looking at zero to x closed but this minimum cannot be inside the zero open x that's what this says therefore the minimum must be at x hence gx must be the minimum value of g in zero to x and that is precisely what we wanted to say therefore gx is less than to g0 in the entire of zero one okay so now we are ready to do the generalization of weak real value theorem why i am calling generalization weak mean value theorem is true for all differentiable functions on a convex domain into rn into rm any vector valued functions now we are going to do it on banach spaces same thing same statement for banach spaces is what we are going to do okay the the usual proof for uh, in the case of rn and rm is becomes easier because the norm square function is differentiable on rn what is norm square namely the euclidean norm the euclidean norm square is just summation x i square so we can use that to to do our job because all other norms are all equivalent to the euclidean norm but in the general case we don't have any such theorem and we don't know in fact it is not even true for us that given a banach space with a norm that norm in our definition may not be differentiable even the square of norm may not be differentiable okay putting that norm being differentiable requires too much of a restriction almost you are begging that it must be a hilbert space okay so that is why the dirie derivatives are brought in to help us to prove the weak mean weak mean value theorem okay so the proof itself is not at all difficult now let us go through this one start with v and w banach spaces u is a convex neighborhood of zero belonging to v okay by the way i have already told you that this assumption that zero belongs to v is just a technical thing you can do it other any for any other point also suppose g from u to w is a differentiable function on u and there exists a lambda positive such that all the derivatives are bounded by lambda norm of g tg at all the points u is less than equal to lambda then the norm of g u minus g 0 is itself less than equal to lambda times norm of u for every u inside u 
So this is me weak mean value inequality. In the case of one variable calculus, this was deduced by using the mean value theorem, wherein there is equality, namely g u minus g zero equal to g prime of something in the interval, and that g prime is bounded by lambda, so you get this one. But we don't have the 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 mean value theorem itself in the case of vector valued functions but what we have is inequality directly okay so this is what we are going to prove it in the case of banach space directly of course it will work for any rn also because rns are also banach spaces okay okay so fix one point u inside u and define this ht equal to norm of g t u minus g 0 okay see if you just take g t u minus g 0 this is precisely one variable calculus okay only thing is this would be a w valued function not a real valued function how to get a real valued function we are left with only taking norm or norm square or some such thing Okay, taking norm square doesn't help you, just take the norm function. This is a continuous function. We don't know that is differentiable. Okay, now we have got into one variable calculus. T is, okay, T is sum between 0 and 1 because u is convex. When you take T times u, it will be still inside u. Okay, so H from J to R is defined on an on an interval containing 0 1 because in open subset i can extend it just a little bit okay 0 1 i can make it 0 2 also but then i will have to take some t by 2 or some such thing unnecessarily complication i just need 0 1 something positive okay and some open interval j containing that we claim that the dd derivative satisfies d plus h t is less than to lambda times u. So this was the condition that we needed. So this lambda is the same thing as this lambda in the hypothesis of the of this proposition. Okay. Once we have proved this one, you can use this our earlier theorem, then this function h itself is less than to lambda times norm u times t. The t is there after all here, okay. For all t inside 0, 1, okay. But then you can put t equal to 1, then you get h t. What is h t here? Just see. When t equal to 1, h 1 is g of u minus g 0. That will be less than or equal to lambda times norm u. That is what we wanted to prove. Okay. So, so we have to prove this, this equation 12, in equation 12, this formula. Okay. So, this comes very easily now. Given t and delta positive such that both t and t plus delta are inside j because j is the interval on which the function is defined. So you have to choose only delta as small as, you know, small, so that t plus delta is also inside. So once that is satisfied, I can look at h of t plus delta as well as h of t and take the difference. Divide by delta, take the supremum and then the infimum that is d plus, okay. So start with h of t plus delta minus ht. That is by definition g of t plus delta times u minus g0 take the norm minus g of t u minus g0 norm of that. That by you know, you know triangle inequality, you see, add and subtract g t u. This plus this is equal less than equal to this one. So so if you take this term on the other side, so this minus this is less than equal to g of t plus delta times u 
minus g of t the norm of that okay this is triangle inequality now once again you add and subtract this term is as it is dg of tu operating on delta u dg at tu operating upon delta u okay add and subtract so that the norm will be less than equal to norm of this plus norm of this second factor which i have subtracted here so there the delta comes out delta is positive which is nothing but norm of dg tu into norm of u okay so this is less than or equal to norm of this is less than or equal to that's why i have put a less than or equal to so this is norm not equal to it. now that why i have pulled out this delta because now i can divide out by this delta when you divide out by this delta okay on the left hand side what you have is the corresponding term for our d plus delta definition h of t plus delta minus h t divided by delta what is this one this is the this occurs in the definition of the derivative right g of t u plus delta u minus g of t u delta times d g at t u okay operate upon u so this is the directional derivative if you look at the in the direction of u because that is this word divided by delta okay and this last term is remains as it is this delta is gone away when you take the limb sup here it will be less than equal to limb sup of this plus limb sup of this but here there is no delta so it is just the constant term okay what is the limb sup of this one limb sup this this limit itself exists the limit itself is zero therefore limb sup limb in fall right and left and all of them are zero so this is zero so what you get is h this one d plus of h will be less than equal to this one okay because when you take limb sup what you get is the uh, definition of d plus of h okay that's what we wanted to prove d plus of h t is less than or equal to this term which is we know is all less than or equal to lambda times by by the assumption here dg of u is less than or equal to lambda okay dg for all elements inside the convex set is less than or equal to lambda So lambda times norm you get. Okay, so what we have proved is this mean value inequality for Banach spaces for all differentiable functions on a convex neighbor, convex open subset. Okay, so let us now uh, convert this into. Uh, the following theorem ready made to use for our uh, uh, implicit function theorem so on let v and w be banach spaces u is a convex open subset f is a differentiable function on u there exists a lambda positive and t is a sum linear you know bounded linear function this this part this part is same thing as the previous uh, proposition but here now i am bringing an arbitrary t which is a bounded linear function on v to w such that dfv minus t norm of this is less than equal to lambda in earlier case if you put t equal to 0 then you get the earlier case okay so now this is an extension df of v minus t is less than or lambda for all v inside u then the conclusion is also slightly different namely f of v2 minus f of v1 minus t times v2 minus v1 is less than or lambda times v2 minus v1 not for every 
V1, V2 inside this convex neighborhood. Okay. This U itself is a subset of the Banach space V. Okay. So this is very easy now. Of course, using this one. Using this one. We don't need any more uh, Dini derivative. We directly use this uh, ready-made theorem there. So first consider the case when V1 itself is 0. Okay. This is my assumption. This may not be the case, but I am assuming this a special case. Now, u is a convex neighborhood of 0 because v1 is after all an element of u. Okay. So, we, ha we have to prove that f u minus f0 minus t of u is less than 2 lambda u for every u inside u. This is a special case we want to prove when v1 is 0 and v2 is just u. Okay, so this is what we want to prove in the special case. For this, what I do, put g equal to f minus t. Because in the hypothesis here, df v minus t is bounded. The norm of this is bounded. So I take g equal to f minus t. What is the derivative of g? It is df minus t. Therefore, this dg is now bounded. Therefore, we can apply the previous proposition and go over, right? Now, one more simplification uh, we have to remove. Namely, I have assumed V1 is 0. Okay. So, how to do it in general case? In the general case, you first take the domain itself to be U minus V1. Translate U by V1. U minus V1. So, shift the origin. That means all points V minus V1 where V is inside U. Okay. On this one, you change the function also now. Namely, instead of F, you take F twiddle of U equal to F of U plus V1. Okay. V1 is a point of U. Therefore, 0 is a point of U minus V1. U is convex. Therefore, U minus V1 is a convex. See, minus v1 is a is a linear, is a isometry. Okay. It is not non-linear, it is it's a fine linear. Okay. It's an isometry. It preserves the norms. So it is convex also and so on. So we can apply the previous conclusion which was done for when v1 equal to 0 for this f instead of that. You do it for F twiddle. What you get is precisely this statement now. Okay, because F twiddle of V2, look at this one. F twiddle is by definition F twiddle of F of U plus V1. So what I have to do if I want to get F of V2 here, F twiddle of V2 minus V1 will be F of V2 f twiddle of 0 will be f of v1 and so on. So, this one follows. Okay. So, whatever we wanted, we have proved it by just shifting the origin or just shifting the function. Okay. The shift of the function is occurring by a linear map here. Okay. So, essentially, this 1.21 is nothing but just a little more modification of our proposition here. And this was proved by using Dini derivative. Okay. So next time we shall prove the implicit function theorem just for the sake of what we are up to, I will just begin it, just statement. And then uh, we will prove this one next time. So implicit function theorem the statement itself is somewhat long here. Okay. The proof is not as long as that. Because you know you don't have to be threatened by the big statement. Okay. The first part is, I mean, the preparation here. What are the hypotheses here? V and W are Banach spaces. Y is any topological space. Okay, so that is the generality that we are we are we have achieved here. Take m cross n 
to be any open subset of y cross v. In other words, m is an open subset of y and n is an open subset of v. I would want to be specifically that. Okay. f from m cross n to w be a continuous function such that for some point y naught v naught belonging to m cross n we have f of y naught v naught is zero for each y inside m the function f y from n to w given by f y of v could f of y v namely y is fixed now okay it is a function of just v from n to w that is differentiable and this derivative derivative will be a function from for each y there is a function n to the bounded linear maps from v to w okay this function must be continuous so for each fixed y it is continuous that is not enough as a bounded from as a function of two different variables it must be continuous okay jointly continuous finally the third one is that the derivative at y not v not f y not derivative of f y not at v not that is t then this t is a similarity okay so hypothesis is this hypothesis is very important that here it is we have an isomorphism a similarity other things are joint continuity of the derivative and before that the function must be differentiable okay only in terms of y in terms of n okay namely in terms of v the y part is arbitrary topological space there is no differentiation there you understand that y is an arbitrary topological space in other words you should think of this as a family fy of v of differentiable function only thing is the family itself is a continuous family okay not only each function is continuous and differentiable the family itself is continuous that is the way we have to express that function is m cross n itself is continuous with this hypothesis now the conclusions there are two conclusions here okay for the second conclusion will need little more hypothesis that's why it is separated out the first conclusion is that you can take a neighborhood m prime of m of y not okay a smaller neighborhood not the whole of m some smaller neighborhood and a neighbor and a rho positive that will be neighborhood of that will give a neighborhood of zero inside n there okay such that for all y inside m prime okay there exists a gy belonging to b rho bar of v not the closed ball around v not with the property that f of y gy is zero okay so you see f of y not v not was zero one solution was think think of f y y v as equal to zero as a equation which we want to solve one one solution has been given okay then you want a continuous solution here on a small neighborhood so that is precisely what is achieved here in fact when you are trying to get a one solution you are assuming you are already getting a unique solution this is the only way to get a solution after all put sufficient conditions so that it becomes unique course in all existence theorems the uniqueness part helps you a lot okay so somehow we have got this uniqueness here also you see only thing is with this hypothesis we have to cut down the domain properly some open subset we don't know okay some row we don't know okay on the closed ball okay for each point inside 
m prime g y will be unique such that f of y g y is zero and this g itself is a continuous function okay one is not satisfied with just continuity we would like to have differentiability also for that we have to put a little more hypothesis because m prime was a subset of just y right y was the topological space so it does not make sense to tell you or demand that g must be differentiable so in order to make that sense we have to at least say that m prime is an open subset of a some norm linear space so that is why we would like to assume that this is this y is a banach space okay so further assume that y is also a banach space and the function f v not from m to w defined by f v not of y equal to f of y v not is differentiable at y not you see i have used now upper index here to indicate that now i am fixing the right hand uh, slot of, uh, as fixed now v not is fixed y is a variable but the function is same a function f okay it is restricted to v not and y is varying that must be differentiable okay we are not demanding anywhere that the m prime to n this function sort of m cross n to w itself is differentiable from the product space but we are demanding that it is continuous whereas differentiability is point is by partial fix y not you get a differentiability fix v not you must be differential function that's all we are demanding okay so this part is that f v not where v not is fixed that must be differentiable at y not and the derivative let us say is h not of h of y not v not this is just a notation for the derivative of this function okay then what happens g will become differentiable at y not what is this g the unique solution given by the part a okay that will be differentiable at y not and its derivative is given by minus t inverse composite with h See, h is a linear map bounded linear map t is a bounded linear map this t is invertible it is similarity so i can talk about t inverse take t inverse of h take the minus of that that will be g y not which happens to be i rewrite it because g is just this t is just g y not v okay so let us prove this statement next time Thank you.